Hey everyone, this is Gary Kay coming to you live from the Launch Studio in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm excited to be joined with David Anderson of MIMO Monitors. David, how are you? Very good. How are you? Doing well. President and CEO of MIMO. And uh, hey, this is going to be an awesome opportunity because we're going to we're going to help launch a brand new product today. And uh, I'm excited to be joined. And I'm excited that you picked the launch platform as a rollout for this new product. Why don't we just start right up the bat and play a sizzle reel on the brand new product that you're bringing your first major product in the UCC market. You're going to if you're in UCC, you're doing collaboration, you're going to want to see this. Let's roll the video. Traditional conference room setups don't empower the seamless connectivity, flexibility, and collaboration today's users need. Before today, AV over IP setups haven't been considered as an answer to this challenge. That's about to change. Introducing the sleek, durable, and reliable MIMO Mist Link, the first Ethernet-connected conference room display with HDMI capture. The Mist Link connects over a single Ethernet cable, eliminating expensive traditional installation, expansive technical expertise, and the hassle for abundant cords, extenders, and hubs. The solution is flexible enough for use anywhere and is recognized by PCs as a regular display. Maximizing space without multiplying complexity, it utilizes a touch display specifically tailored for conferencing, features a multi-touch capacitive touchscreen, and offers integrated HDMI capture to boost productivity. The solution's CAT5e connection to the main PC includes power and doesn't consume HDMI. The MIST link complies with Microsoft and Zoom specifications and includes support for low power modes with auto wake up, a high-end, low-profile design combined with desktop and wall mounting capabilities and enterprise level reliability testing mean the MIST link is ready to elevate your space from day one. Empowered connection. Reimagine your conference room. Uh, I don't, th I think that everyone's going to love this product. I think it's going to be hot. Uh, first off, I want to write up the front. You want to connect with David on LinkedIn. If you're in the UCC market, you're going to want to connect with David on LinkedIn. Scan that QR code. All you have to do is hold up your phone's camera to that QR code. It'll find him on LinkedIn. Of course, if you want to connect with me, you can do the same thing. Uh, David, congratulations on a great product. I'm really excited that you're debuting it here on the launch platform. So let's, uh, let's first talk about uh, why AV... Well, I should back up in just a second. I'll let, let him go ahead and go to that next slide. But I want to I point something out. I'm here in the launch studio. On your screen in front of you, if you want to post questions to either one of us, just do it on the right side. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the Q&A. Below the screen, you're going to see networking. This is where you can talk to each other, but you can also uh, ask me questions. I'm on the networking. I'm on networking as well. If you just post a question in there, I'm going to see it. I might look down every once in a while because I'm looking at networking. I'm looking at Q&A and I'm looking at you as well, David. So let's first right off the bat, let's talk about why AV over IP. You, MIMO is a leader in touchscreen display technology. Um, why AV over IP for this product, David? Well, I mean, in the end, uh, what it boils down to is, uh, you, you know, reliable installation, ease of installation, ease of use. Um, if you think of uh, touch controllers, which is what you know we do here uh, in the UCC space, you look at our our previous product or the products of of, uh, of some of our competitors. Uh, typically, they're connected over uh, USB, HDMI, uh, um, and these things are network or are connections that were intended to be over uh, short distances. So you're dealing with uh, extenders or active extenders, and you're routing cables. Uh, that were never really intended uh, for the for the um, use, and uh, AV over IP uh, pretty much solves uh, all those issues. Yeah, and so the nice thing about AV over IP is you can run all the signals over the same network, and you're actually on the network. And because you're actually on the network, there's a lot of unique things that you can actually do. Um, and uh, you know, for specifically in the UCC space. Um, that kind of differentiate it. I think a lot of people think of AV over IP as being facility-wide or campus-wide. But the fact that with AV over IP, not only can you run any signal bi-directionally through an AV over IP platform, right? Video, audio, control, uh, the network itself, but you can also power it. And that's a key component, right? The fact that you have really simplified 
the application for this. In fact, I, I, I don't even know if there is another uh, um, tabletop touchscreen display in the UCC space that doesn't require more than one cable. Yours only going to require one cable. All you're going to need is that, that AV over IP connection because you're running power across it. No separate power wall wart or anything like that. No worry about power routing in the, in the, in the tabletop. This is pretty innovative. This is going to, this is going to get set a new bar as far as those go. What do you, uh, do you agree with that, David? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we we started our life with USB, and and uh, and we liked our uh, you know single cable for touch, uh, video, and and power. Um, in the UCC space, it doesn't really work, especially because you're you're using some more power hungry sort of applications. Uh, um, that being uh, with video or with uh, audio or HDMI capture, right? So the other thing that that uh, that we have here is is HDMI capture built into uh, the display um, so you can connect your HDMI to your laptop and share it to the rest of the team. And it goes over that same uh, single cable. We're actually, believe it or not, sending video um, both directions, um, both from the host computer to the display to render the UI, um, but also the HDMI capture uh, back to the host uh, for uh, you know, for sh uh, remote sharing and or yeah, even we're, sharing we're actually going to go like through that. the feature set in more detail in a moment. But I do want to I do want to talk about I want to talk about from the technology standpoint first. There's a reason why you have AV over there, why there's a reason why you have HDMI. We're going to get to that in just a second. There's a key spec that you're hitting that's important to talk about. But let's talk about it from a standpoint of AV over IP in the UCC environment. Even though AV over IP has been and has been targeted by most of the companies that are in the market of making uh, encoders and decoders in AV over IP, our facility or campus-wide installations, meaning I'm going to do an entire building or I'm going to do an entire company or an entire organization, in the UCC space, this makes logical sense because it, you have a controlled environment, which is being used for a specific uh, application, especially in the meeting room um, application like what you're going to shine in is that you have everything within your control and you have a network source. Most most uh, applications now are using soft codec systems. So you're actually inside the network on the same network potentially as the organization. So it just made logical sense, I, I guess, to kind of build this as AV over IP, not from just from the simplicity standpoint, but because the content is on the network. Now you've sort of streamlined the whole process of running a meeting. I'm, I'm guessing you thought about that because as we go back to work after COVID, we're now going to be separated where people in the same meeting can be in multiple locations, yet they can still be on the same network. Uh, yeah, I mean, our one thing about our, our display is, I mean, it is IP based. So, um, you know, you can plug it into a network, it'll run over switch networks, things like that. Um, it also runs as a direct connect, right? So if you want to take advantage of the single cable, the power, the, you know, ubiquitous cabling, the reliable connection, but you don't want uh, all the extra data running over your network, uh, you can do that as well. You can take um, uh, our two our two boxes and and uh, plug them together um, directly, and uh, and then there's no there's no data traffic uh, on the network. It's really up to the end user what they prefer. Yeah, well, again, we'll talk about the individual features for the product in in just a moment. Um, let's talk about a cost comparison. I think there's naturally a thought process that AV over IP is more expensive than sort of the way that systems are being built now. But but the way that you did this and the fact that you're using AV over IP ironically does exactly the opposite. We already have a question come in from Mark uh, uh, Luther. And I want to remind people that you can ask, ask a question by just looking to the right uh, of the video window. You'll see the Q&A area. And then down below, you'll see the, the networking area. Networking, you can talk to everyone that's online. You can... Um, exchange your opinions. I'd love to see you talking about what you think about this product. And of course, if you want to post any, uh, you know, uh, feature uh, ideas or suggestions to the MIMO team, this is a great opportunity to do it. But on the right, send the Q&A to me and I'll make sure that David answers those questions. So Mark Luther asks, I'm looking down to answer this question, as dealing with most federal agency, what security features are built in and specifically where is the device manufactured, David? 
Uh, since that question came up right away, I'm going to go ahead and ask it, even though we're not talking about the feature set. We are going to have a whole slide that goes through all the feature set. But uh, he, is, he is concerned from a security standpoint simply because of the new rules and regulations with regard to, you know, where things are manufactured and the security issues surrounding that. David, what do you, what do you, how do you uh, answer that question? Yeah, so our MIMO's um, factory is uh, in Korea. So it's manufactured in, in South Korea, which is a trade compliant uh, country. So no issues from that perspective. Um, from a uh, security perspective, the best answer I can give to that is, the, is, is don't connect it to your network. Connect our two boxes together. Um, and then there is no way anybody can hack it. And then what is connected to the room PC is an HD, or excuse me, is a USB connection and, uh, you know, no security concerns at all. Yeah, yeah. and we're, we're talking about, uh, the next issue I want to talk about is sort of a cost comparison. Um, and uh, there are, you know, there are other products out there that do, uh, that they have touch screen. There's companies that have touch screen, one touch, um, join a meeting. Uh, yours is quite different in the sense that, you have the ability, most of them don't have the ability to be Teams or Zoom or whatever you want it to be, right? I mean, you have two Teams, Zoom, Meet, whatever platform you want, you can build a room with this. Um, so you're not actually tied to one platform. So there's an advantage there. So, there's, so when you, you're, not, you're not tied into only using one platform forever. Um, but, but also because of the fact that, interestingly enough, that you used AV over IP, you actually have a cost advantage, right? Yeah, so um, the technology itself is more expensive than our USB technology. So the purchase price of the unit is um, is slightly higher than some of our other products. Um, and and to think about cost, that is one of the things that we needed to focus on. I mean, their AV over IP has been uh, in the facility space for a while. There's in, encoders and decoders. Um, but if we had taken an existing technology and sort of shoved it into uh, our world, there would be missing features, which I'll ignore or will I, which I'll skip right now. But the other thing is the cost. Uh, it, it would have been too expensive. Um, we, it, it would have created a $2,000 touch controller and, and we just don't think there's a big market for that. Um, we're under a thousand dollars, a retail price. Um, obviously, uh, we sell into the channel. So, uh, um, you know, for integrators and resellers and distributors and things like that, there's, uh, uh, you, you know, there's some stuff in there. Um, but, uh, but the installed cost is lower. If you look at what it takes to truly install, say, one of our previous generation uh, displays, the view capture, um, generally you have to buy the unit, that's $500, <clears throat> um, but then you have to buy um, um, active extenders and you're into specialty installation and you've got reliable uh, you, you've got uh, reliability issues. If you're going a long distance, then you're into active extenders. Just a USB 3 active extender can be over $1,000 uh, just on its own. Um, so, uh, you know, the installed cost of our display should be significantly less than anything else that's, that's out there. Well, there's some myths regarding AV over IP that I think should be addressed. Uh, there's, there's some sort of, you know, there's people, some people have opinions about uh, some of the issues with regard to AV over IP, but really, it's a it's a uh, if you talk if you if you follow any of the AV over IP companies, one big advantage of AV over IP is uh, the standards that it brings to everything that you do AV over IP. Uh, our industry came from an industry of video and audio non-standards. We had to kind of invent our own standards, whereas the network industry from the very beginning had standards with regard to how to how to route. Um, how to route uh, signal and power and how to deal with packetization of that data and how to deal with security and all those kinds of things. We are moving into a realm where in this, in the case of this product, you are getting into those standards. But what are some of the other myths or, or sort of the other things that people have challenged you on that you want to take the opportunity to kind of inform people to maybe take a second look at using AV over IP in this application? Well, I mean, some of the myths that uh, uh, that are out there, first of all, is that AV over IP isn't right for UCC because there's features that are missing, right? So um, this isn't entirely true um, of, of every uh, standard that's out there, but, but things like interactivity are, are not always part of it. 
because if you think of it in a facilities, you're broadcasting a message across your campus or, or whatever. And, uh, you, you know, you don't expect people to, to touch the screen to get information on an AV over IP system. In UCC, obviously, that's what we are. We are a touch controller. Right. Um, so we had to build uh, those sort of features in um, cost was one of them. Right. AV over IP, um, uh, you know, can cost could have increased the cost of our box, um, you know, quite significantly. Um, reliability um, is uh, a question because it's a new technology. People may think that uh, it shouldn't be a reliable product. That said, um, you know, what you're getting into are Ethernet cables, which are positive locking, and uh, networking components, which have been around for literally decades. Um, you know, CAT, uh, in our case, it's CAT5e, but, you know, CAT, CATX cable, um, which is ubiquitous and highly reliable. And, and, uh, and, and so, you know, in the end, it, 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 it should prove to not only be easier to install, but, uh, but more reliable uh, overall. There's been a call for, um, and, and my next slide you know, is, is kind of interesting. There's been a call for um, sort of a, an opportunity to have a product that in the UCC space, a uh, UCC appliance that would basically work with all the different platforms and simplify connectivity. So really, this is like no other out there. And I, and I think that what you've hinted at some of it, and in a minute, we're going to go through the feature set. But I think that I'm hoping the audience will take the time um, to go through and compare this product when you see the feature set in just a moment. Compare that to the other products that are out there. And some of the other products that are out there are, are easily recognizable and identifiable um, if you just stop and think about the big two or three companies that are in that space of building one-touch controllers. Um, and, of course, some people even use the iPad. Right. So so the iPad, the issue with the iPads are, are totally different issues. It's an, e it's an easy interface, but there's there's a, he a heavy duty amount of issues with, with the iPad. That's just sort of a backup. But we have a, an industry with some big companies in there that are building single touch touchscreen controllers for rooms. They don't have single uh, connector uh, flexibility. They are not AV over IP. You're also limited in the fact that it's a single use application ultimately when you set it up. Uh, they're not they're not necessarily all compatible with the different uh, they're not all necessarily certified with the different room systems out there. You're going to provide everyone a single platform that they can order from and and then get compatibility with all the different UCC platforms. This is quite different. And on top of that, it's going to be significantly less expensive when you compare both the cost of the hardware and the time. This is the piece that you were trying to to uh, address with the myths. The time that it takes to do these installs is cut down significantly by the simplification of cabling and the standardization of, of cabling. A lot more companies have run a network cable to their desktops and meeting room tables than they've run anything else uh, to their tables. It's not, it's not normal to run an HDMI cable in most, in most offices uh, until an AV company gets in there to do that. So this is going to be a nice. Uh, this is going to be a nice, simple install. So let's go to the next uh, screen. Just to add, about go ahead. Go sorry, ahead. Just, just to add real quick, the other big thing that um, is is a huge advantage, and we talked about it before. But the fact that it runs on PoE means you don't need power at the table, um, and so you're not calling an electrician. You don't have to. Uh, you know, you can move a table anywhere you want it to be uh, in the room today or tomorrow. Um, because you're not locked down to having facilities in certain locations. Yeah, and, and therefore, the other piece of that is you don't have a wall wart sitting there on the table for power as well. So even if you did have power. Um, so I want to talk about the features themselves. We did have a couple other questions come in. Um, what's the latency that exists on the product? Um, so let's the product's called Mimo Mist Link, as you saw from the video. But David, uh, first question that just came in specifically about the product is about latency. Yeah, so that was a key concern, um, and uh, and it and it can be a problem in AV over IP. Um, I, the short answer is I don't know exactly what it is because it's really hard to measure. Um, uh, be, because of, because if you're not familiar, it's because when frames start and frames end and things like that. So it's really hard to nail it down to a single number. Our goal was to be uh, under 100 milliseconds, which is about the limit uh, of where you're, you notice um, a latency problem. 
Um, it is somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 milliseconds, but I can't give yeah. you an exact number. Yeah, so, so I'm sure that that data will come, but as long as it's not noticeable, um, then, uh, then, then that'll be an interesting data point to actually have. That question was asked by Matt Boyer, so I'm sure he's going to want to get a follow-up on make sure that you have his contact information. Another question came in from Lloyd Lander Langerhoven, who, who asked, uh, will this work with MTRPCs, and will customers need a source for the MTRPC from other vendors? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with MTR. That's what it says, MTRPC. So we'll, we'll see. Hey, Lloyd, do you mind uh, defining what MTR is? Because I'm not sure what MTR is. Maybe I'm supposed to know that. Um, John Warbrook asks, uh, if used with a switch network, what are the bandwidth requirements between two boxes? Is, is the traffic encrypted? Um, and uh, as far as, uh, let's see, can it, something about VLC and other applications, can it be eavesdropped by VLC and other applications? So in other words, you know, the encryption is the key point there. Uh, yeah, so the uh, the data is encrypted um, uh, end to end. Um, it's you know it's packetized and it but and it is encrypted. Um, the bandwidth requirements uh, are that that's I suppose the one downside is we we we, are, we have created um, uh, visually lossless video going both directions. So visually lossless on the screen. And then we support 4K. Uh, we support 4K from the desk back to the main PC, uh, visually lossless. And when we do that, um, we require about 900 megabits. So basically, an entire gigabit, uh, um, you know, system. Um, yeah. It's switchable, so you obviously need to run that into uh, a gigabit switch if you're going to put that out on your network. But yeah, it is it is a lot of data that's moving around. Yeah, and, and 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 appreciate your honesty there. Uh, it is on a one gig network. You also had a good point that you don't actually have to connect it to the network. You're running in between the the, the transmitter receiver box and the and to be the, uh, the honest about it. We expect the vast majority of our installs to be a direct connection, right? Yeah, between um, the, it, I, one thing that we haven't said yet is that it shows up to the room PC as a display, just like any other, right? So then it can be managed from a display. You uh, that's why it can work with uh, with with Teams and Zoom and, and others, uh, and and because there's nothing special in the back end, you know Teams or Zoom or whomever just sees it as any other display. You can put a UI on it, uh, touch display, Windows sees it that way, and and uh, and and it can be managed that way as well, uh, and it can be managed through the Room PC, um, which is the way we expect most people to install it. We, you know, it can, as I say, it can go on the network. It can be managed on the network. That said, I, we don't expect most people would do that. I'm going to, I'm going to have, we're going to go back and answer Jason's question who just posted a question in just a second. I want to go back to the slides and I want to go through the feature set because I think some of it, his questions might be answered as we go look at the slides. Uh, so first off, it's uh, the display itself is a touchscreen display. It's got a nice design to it. 1920 by 800 resolution. Uh, specifically for UCC applications, so you, you use it as a Zoom or a Teams or or Meet, uh, whatever you are going to use it for. It's Cat5 connectivity, and it's AV over IP. We're going to come back to that, Jason, because his question was, I am missing the value of this if the manufacturer, you, says that it, not to connect it to the network because it will not comply to, with security. We're going to get back to that, okay? Next feature is HDMI integrated or pass-through. So the, the, the reason why I mentioned that uh, earlier on is that the Microsoft Teams spec requires HDMI in. And in their case, they're get, they're, they not only meet that spec, but they're also doing the it's integrated in or pass through. And video goes both directions, which is highly unusual. I don't think any of the other touch display companies are doing that. It's, it's meet, uh, it's Teams and Zoom uh, certified. Uh, so you're going to get a product that's going to work on any of the platforms out there. And this is a look at what the what the different screens look like. Uh, there's Teams uh, right there. If we go to the next shot, there's uh, Zoom, obviously, and there's there's Meet. Um, so let's go on to the next uh, bullet uh, there. We have uh, integrated cable management. This is a big deal. Uh, this is part of the answer for Jason. You can't do this kind of cable management with a system that isn't AV over IP or with the other systems that are out there and still deal with power because everything is is nicely wrapped and they've got a really nice design 
uh, in the base of the of the unit itself. I was really impressed with that when I saw it in the prototype stage when it, when he showed me the images before they had the final images because uh, that's a big deal is how to make it look nice on a on a on a on a tabletop. So I'm going to ask you, uh, David, to address that, and of course PoE connectivity uh, as well if you if you decide to connect to the network. Um, or, or it'll drive directly from the from its own uh, encoder decoder. Uh, it'll be powered PoE as well, so you don't actually have it to have to have to have it connected to the network. So Jason asks that question, David: Why PoE or why AV over IP? Why bother? Like, what's the advantage of this if you can't put it on a network itself? Um, well, let's be clear: you can put it on a network, but um, but if you but as I say, I don't expect most people will do that. So why AV over IP? The it it boils down to um, uh, flexibility and uh, an ease of installation at that point, right? So you've got a single cat X cable. Um, you know, every IT guy in the world knows how to install such a thing. They can install it at exactly the length they need. If you look at some of the stuff that is out there today, you've got uh, USB and extenders and that and HDMI, and you can buy your maybe you need a uh, an 18 foot run, but you have to buy a 25 foot. Uh, cables, so you got to coil HDMI cables up somewhere. You got to hide all that kind of stuff. Um, whereas, you know, Cat Five, you can make any length uh, you want. It's ubiquitous. It's probably already at your table, uh, making uh, installation easy. Uh, no power required. Uh, well, no power at the table. Obviously, the display itself needs power, but we can send it, uh, you know, down the down the cable, uh, and and. And uh, and so it's just it's it's just a simple uh, system to to install, uh, and only a single cable. You don't get into a mess of extenders and and things like that. Yeah, I think that the answer to that question is if you're an integrator, uh, Jason. If you're an integrator doing a lot of these systems, then you see the 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 hassle that you have to go through with all of the connectivity issues. And the simplification of install, I think, is appreciated by that group of, uh, of, of people. Not everyone's going to right away recognize the value of putting it all on one cable uh, until you're doing 300 of these rooms over the course of one month or even 20 rooms in one building, and you have to deal with uh, the cable management differently for every single room. Um, so I think that that is, it's really, it comes down to, his answer comes down to simplicity. It's we're, we're, we're simplifying the whole install process. That is not as noticeable on the front end as a feature. A lot of time that gets noticed on the back end from the integrator standpoint, not on the front end to the customer, uh, because the customer just looks at as the, the, you know, the features and, and the benefits and the workflow side of things. But that's a great question. I appreciate you posting that. We are, I'm going to go back to the MT, uh, MTRPC question because it's Microsoft Teams. So uh, I didn't realize that that's what it was, re it was referring to, Microsoft Teams room. So in, uh, and that's what, that's what the reference was. So I'm gonna read the question again, David. Question okay. was, will this work with Microsoft Teams room PCs and will customers need to source the Microsoft Teams uh, room PC from other vendors or are you gonna have, I guess if it does and it require and it has that, are you gonna offer that as an option along with your product? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. That was not the plan. Um, so, but, um, uh, yeah, so uh, let's back up. So uh, it will work with, with Microsoft Teams. Um, the Microsoft Teams will, you can uh, put your uh, UI on it and things like that. I do want to make, uh, I guess, a, a couple of corrections. One is that it says that it's Microsoft Teams certified. Um, at this point, it's my, it, it, it meets this. It it meets all the requirements. It isn't actually been through all its certification yet, uh, so let's be a little clear uh, there. But it does work with uh, uh, it does work with with Teams, and it and it does uh, meet all the requirements. So certification should be coming here uh, at some time in the future. Um, uh, we were not intending to supply um, Microsoft Teams rooms uh, kits. Um, but but one of the things that Mimo does is we partner with with others. So I suspect I don't even suspect I know, although I don't have anything I can publicly say now that we will be, be um, kitted with um, other people's hardware cameras and, and and PCs and stuff like that. So yeah, I want to thank Anthony Steinmetz, uh, David. 
uh, Wenchi, I'm sure I did not pronounce that right. I'm sorry, David, and Christopher Poulin for all three answering the question that I did not know the answer to, which is that abbreviation. Apparently, MCR is specifically referencing the Crestron Teams PC appliance product. And I think that's where that came up um, from there. Um, and I think that'd be a good example of a product that you should compare this with with theirs, because I think uh, the price and the simplicity of installation might be interesting for you to look at. Johan Warbrook uh, asks, how is the network display device recognized by the host PC? Are there special drivers needed for it? And it, it, as, as it is not connected, if it's not connected to the graphics board of the host PC? Um, so uh, underneath the hood is, uh, is, is got a USB. Um, so the connection, in fact, I, I have one here connected yeah, to sure. the laptop. There it is right there. So this is connected to my laptop, which is the only connection. There's power uh, for this box, which generates the power and does the encoding for the other side, and then the Cat5 cable uh, on the other that side. Cat5 so, is what's going to the. That's the Cat5 going to the display, yep. and yeah, and then the other side is where power is coming in. That's your transmitter, receiver, encoder, decoder product, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a little. It, I, I call it a transmitter, although it's a receiver as well. It's yeah. a codec. I don't know. Give it whatever name, but this. This, this sits at the PC side because it requires power and it's connected to the room PC, but there's power there because you have a PC there. And then this runs off to the other side um, to the display. Now, so what does that mean? It is running, in the end, the display is connected over USB. Um, if you're familiar with the industry, you're familiar with DisplayLink, um, yeah. which is what the technology is built on top of. No, there isn't a single thing in our... Uh, in our product that requires a specialized driver. So display link drivers are built into Windows. Everything else, the touch is HID compliant. Uh, we've got sensors in there, they're HID compliant. Uh, there's audio in there, that's uh, UVC, or excuse me, UAC, uh, USB audio class. Uh, the, the capture uh, becomes UVC, U U USB video class, and UAC. Um, so uh, one thing that MIMO does not want to be is in the driver business. Uh, so you plug it in and uh, base you don't have to install anything, actually. Windows will take care of it for you. All right, so great question. I'm glad this question got asked. I, I can't wait to answer it because I know the answer to this. Why not HD base T? Well, there's uh, a few uh, reasons for that. Um, HD base T is not a uh, network, right? So it is its own proprietary system. It runs over Cat5 or Cat X, I should say, um, but, but it is not switchable. Um, it's also um, not inexpensive. That's kind of what it boils down to. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to uh, send our video. We don't feel, feel like we would have been able to send our video data, um, you know, both directions. So yeah, so to get the bi-directional capabilities that you have, it would have it would have substantially raised the cost. And I think you're going to be surprised at, at the pricing of this when you compare it. Um, so Jim Griffith asks, uh, if you make a direct link between the panel uh, the panel and head in using existing structured cable. Does the head in provide PoE? Uh, I, I guess I don't quite understand. I think, that. I think well, let me, let's try. I'm going to answer. I'm going to ask the question both ways to make sure we address this question. Okay. Obviously, you're powering the the encoder decoder, and that's providing power to the display. Yeah. So this, you, this this power here powers yep. this, it also has a PSE, uh, right. so power sending out the cable. Now, right. what's coming out of here is PoE uh, compliant. Right. So if you wanted to power the, the, the display end off of a PoE switch, it, that would work as well. That's the other way I was going to ask the question: Is it could be worked that could it work that way as well? And I think that's what he's asking, Jim. If I did not ask that question right, ask it again, and I'll do a better job. Miguel uh, Suarez asks: uh, It uses Display Link on the USB connection to transmit the video? Question uh, mark. The the video from the from the PC to the head end. So think of it as the UI on the display is built on top of display link technology. That is correct. 
It is not DisplayLink coming back because DisplayLink only has soft encoders, right? Their chips uh, take an encoded signal from a PC and they decode it and they display signals. It is not DisplayLink the other way because DisplayLink yep. does not offer a, a hardware encoder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is awesome. Keep asking the questions. This is great, David. Appreciate you continuing to answer these questions. And I love the fact that you're willing to answer the challenges. It's probably also making you uh, think about some of the ideas that you might have for future versions of this. Uh, Anthony Steinmetz asks, um, do you have a line drawing slide of a simple room solution, i.e. Nemo touch, PC camera, display, audio device, if not, if not a display? Is there something that we can pop up right now um, I don't have anything. I don't, I don't have anything, but is there a place on your website where you might have yeah, that? So if, if, right you now? Go, if you go to our website um, and you find the Mimo mist uh, it's in, the, it's under products. It's one of the drop downs. Actually the first thing that's in there is a uh, interactive graphic, which kind of shows you the difference uh, between a sort of traditional installation and our installation. Yeah, MimoMonitors.com. Uh, check out, click on products. I think it's actually highlighted on your home page as well, if I remember correctly. Um, the next question came in from uh, uh, Jason Jaworski, who asked, this looks like uh, it will work great with the Utelogy platform. I think it's more of a comment. I don't know if you know much about Utelogy's control platform, but it's a, it's a, it's a network-based, cloud-based platform. David, have you, have you talked to Utelogy and you familiar oh, yeah, with I know, you, I, I know Utelogy. They buy a bunch of our stuff. Well, they don't, but their customers buy a bunch of our stuff. Um, it would work uh, with uh, Utology, um, mm -hmm. uh, although they buy mostly our Android-based um, stuff uh, as mm -hmm. well. So it's it's either way, um, but it, it but we will definitely be working with Utology. Okay, so. another question came in from AVI Trainer. Who? Hey, AVI Trainer, I know who you are. Uh, says why not uh, why not use the uh, SMTPE standard, like uh, 2110, NDI, SDVOE, or Dante AV. Uh, why not use one of those AV over IP standards rather than rather than doing your own or using you know your own one gig? Uh, I mean, the short answer is because nobody uh, no nobody has all the features that we required, um, which for is the cost that you wanted to hit, for, like for the cost needed. for the cost that we want to hit. That's correct. Yeah. We, yeah. we needed to go our own way um, to be able to hit the kind of cost target that we felt was was necessary. And when you think of AV or IP, nobody was really thinking about sending sending data in both directions, right? Yeah, and, and that is a key thing. With AV over IP, notice that none of the platforms, with the exception of one, uh, sends data both directions. The, and, uh, and also think about the cheapest encoder decoder at what you're doing here is going to be around $1,200 at, 12, uh, at uh, 1920 by 1280 resolution. So that in itself, just the encoder portion of that would have jacked the price of, of, of this up considerably. So you built like a closed loop AV, using AV over IP, but then still made it network compatible and broke the price barrier. Speaking of the price barrier, uh, David, what is this going to cost for everything? So, um, you know, it comes configured only one way, and our our MSRP is nine ninety nine. So nine hundred ninety nine dollars. See, there's the big reveal. So for nine, compare that to the two that are popping in your mind right now, who do touchscreen, one touch controllers on the table, and consider the fact that the cable management that they have, consider the fact that it's not networkable, it's not PoE, it's not AV over IP. I think that that's a pretty uh, awesome price point because you've, you're doing encoding and decoding. You're sending HDMI both directions. You're sending data both directions. Uh, I think that's the piece that's going to surprise people. So $9.99 to do a touch control for room. I'd love to see the comments on that. Um, do you think, the next question that came in is, um, um, do you think from Lloyd Langhoven again, do you think it would be interesting uh, in collaboration, in collaborating with someone like Crestron to offer custom room control and buttons for the touch panel, as well as UCC dialing controls separately from, from the interface itself. Have you thought about maybe um, partnering with any of the control vendors to do something like that? We, uh, we do a lot of collaboration. Um, we're 
I think it's kind of part of the industry that we, you know, we have people that we work with. If, if people who know Mimo, you know that Google has been a partner of ours for a while. You know that the touch controller in the meat kits, both of them are, are Mimo controllers. Uh, we work with others that are, we're um, behind the, uh, you, you know, underneath and you don't necessarily know it's us. Um, Crestron today is not one of them. We have had multiple conversations with Crestron, but just never been able to to find the right uh, the right thing. Um, but yeah, I mean we're uh, we're willing to work with all comers. Yeah, and remember they they all, they're also third party companies and people building all sorts of drivers. Real quickly, a driver for this to Crestron will will appear. Um, one of the uh, the next question that came in was about Mac compatibility. I was going to actually ask that question myself. We talked a lot about PC. We keep saying PC, keep paying PC, but confirm Mac compatibility if you want to use that as the room PC. Um, we we actually have yet not yet tried it, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but having said that, there should be no reason why it wouldn't work, right? Yeah, I mean um, they're basically Mac, integrating Mac support, port as well. Mac supports um, UVC, UAC. Mac supports Display Link. Um, Mac supports, well, touch control is uh, lacking in, in Mac, uh, but there's drivers to solve that problem. So I don't think there's any reason why it shouldn't work. Yeah, and the new OS, as you all probably have heard from Apple, they're adding uh, bi-directional uh, touch through the USB port uh, in the new update. So that's going to come any, any, any week now, theoretically. So that, that'll bring them back up, I think, in the touch side of things. Um, is there a motion sensor in the monitor to wake it up uh, when somebody walks in the room um, or, uh, you know, somehow to, okay, there you go. Answers right there. There you go. Motion sensor. What is that other port? Is that a, is that a, uh, a so these, these are, these, these are uh, the high frequency audio for zoom requirements. Okay. So they're, I mean, they're, they're speakers, uh, yep. but it's, it's, they do the, I, the room ID. Uh, through there's stereo speakers, so they're on each side, and this is uh, the human presence sensor, right? That so everything can go to sleep, and then this can wake up the the room PC. Uh, can the you, presence sensor also be uh, used for IoT applications? Like, uh, could you could you then expand it and have it tell you how many people are in a room or how often it's being used or something like that? Well, so uh, I guess that becomes a software question, which isn't really our thing. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to tell you how many people are in a room. We can tell you if it's occupied. Our, our presence sensor isn't just a, um, a PIR motion sensor. It will, it will also detect um, uh, sustained, excuse me, sustained presence, um, uh, but but that's that's sort of on the software side. It's capable. Okay. Is there an operating system on the display, or is it kind of a dumb display? <laughs> I'd like to think that it's not a dumb display. Well, you know what I mean by that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it is not uh, running Android or or anything like that. Uh, yeah. It, all the technology is is uh, you know buried in in the in the two boxes, and. Uh, and and in the end, it's just a regular display to to the system, and it sees a bunch of USB connected devices as if you were connected directly over USB. Yeah, and I'll use the uh, politically correct term, which is purpose built. Um, so, yeah, there, uh, there is a there is a separate microcontroller in it, so um, we can add, we can extend its capabilities uh, to um, uh, to to do additional things, um, but there's no operating system now. Um, another question came in is website states resolution is 1280 by 700. Res yeah. Website states resolution is 1200 by 800. 12, that, 1280 by 800. Your slide, unfortunately, was incorrect. I should, I should. It's, so the slide, by so it's 1200 by 800 or 1280 by 800? 1280 by 800. Okay. I 16, hit, by 10, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 1280 by 800. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's see, does it support HDCP? I don't know why it would need uh, to support HDCP. So the UI, the, side, the UI side does. The yeah. HDMI side, the capture side does not because we can't. Um, and not that we're not capable of it. In fact, the the but we'd be in violation of, because we're capturing HDMI, we'd be in violation of the spec. So no, yeah. we're, 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 we're actually not allowed to. 
Yeah, that's an interesting, uh, there, there's an interesting issue there that if you really want to look into it, those people who install a lot of Mac stuff and then go and do Windows stuff uh, as well, they know the issue with HTCP versus on Windows versus on Mac and know the kind of issues there. Um, I, Apple's being very conservative and Microsoft's being very liberal with HDCP, and I think it causes a problem when you're going between devices. That's a great question. I had a question for you, too. There's a couple other questions I want to get to, but there's a question I have. What about USB-C? I know you put the HDMI on there, obviously, for obvious reasons, because you needed it for the team spec. But would you be able to adapt that to USB-C in the future? Have you thought about maybe adding that as a function uh, in the future versions? Uh, we Yeah, we've thought about um, supporting like alt mode on USB-C and things like that. What, one feature we didn't talk about is we actually do have a uh, USB connector um, in the display so that you can connect things through um, to even make your cabling easier, right? Um, we're working, I'm, I'm talking right here uh, on a Yamaha little uh, personal speaker mic thing, USB connected. Um, obviously, there's a number of people who make USB speaker mics. Uh, you can connect that through our display. Um, it'll The USB will get converted. It'll show up on a, a room PC as, as any other uh, okay. USB connected thing to, to make. And we can supply power um, to it. So it makes your room installation even easier. Yeah, that's uh, a you literally need a single. You can have your speaker mic connected through our display, uh, then a single cable back to uh, back to where the PC is. So going back to that question of why not HD base T, there's a great example of it. That would have been a bit harder to do on HD base T to maintain all the different USB devices that you would want to put in there. Andrew Starks asks, um, if not, uh, when do you plan to support Mac? His question was, you know, they they need to obviously, uh, you know. Um, just do the field testing. It's a brand, this is literally a brand new product. I can tell you that when he and I had the discussion about this two weeks ago, he didn't have a product to show me yet because the products that they had were all in uh, QC and, and going through engineering testing and things like that. So um, I can understand why, and I appreciate your honesty on the, on not having tested all the functionality with, with uh, Mac. And of course you have obviously now the next step is to go through getting certification from each of the platforms for room certification, which you ultimately, you know, you're going to pass, but you have to go. It's, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like just the process you have to go through when you buy a new car, you have to get it inspected every year. You, same kind of thing here. You've got to go through that process. Um, so you're, you're confident. What about the other platforms out there? I mean, I know we, we focused on zoom. We focused on teams. We focused on, Neat, which are three of the big ones, but what about Blue Jeans rooms and uh, and now Pexip rooms? Pexip rooms are becoming uh, more po uh, power, um, more uh, more popular. So platform flexibility. What about platform flexibility in the future, David? So I, I will uh, preface my answer with I'm not familiar with Blue Jeans requirements or Pexip requirements, so I can't say absolutely specifically. But again, the way we architected it is it's just to display. So if Pexip works, um, or Blue Jeans uh, can can render a, a UI on a touch display, then it should work, right? Um, there's no magic under the hood. Um, you know, we didn't have to go get uh, whitelisted by a bunch of stuff. Um, in fact, uh, the first uh, place we tried um, our display is with Meet um, because we, because of our relationship with Google. And uh, and we just plugged it into uh, an existing meat kit, and and it just worked. I mean, literally did nothing. Um, it recognized everything. It rent, it put its UI on it. Um, the capture card worked. Literally, there was nothing to do. It just it just it just came out of the box working. Um, and so I suspect that should work with blue jeans and others, but but I, I can't say specifically. Well, David, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate the, uh, this has been great. Uh, first off, we love it when people are willing to, companies are willing to come and introduce their products uh, on our platform, bring it to our members of uh, launch. Um, we're, of course, uh, we're also coming out, as you probably know, we're, we're actually live on LinkedIn as well. Uh, so a lot of people on my LinkedIn network of, uh, I've got about 25, almost almost 30,000 LinkedIn followers. We also shared it to the AV over IP gr AVIP group, which has another 40,000 followers. So a lot of people out there seeing this product for the first time, there's a great opportunity for you to 
learn more by going to memomonitors.com. There's a couple of last second questions, David, if I can hold you, because we still got you for five more minutes, technically. Uh, Chrome OS. What about- I, I, was, I was late, so uh, you, can, you can go over. Well, we you- did have a connectivity issue with the audio, but what about Chrome OS? Uh, yeah, Chrome uh, Meet is built on Chrome, so yeah. uh, it works like a charm. Excellent. That's good. Um, and then uh, and he said, well, I just got my answer. He went to the website. So your information on the website is helping him out and uh, things are things are going well. Um, Mimo, uh, Mimo is an interesting company. I've, I've been following Mimo for a while because of your relationship with uh, some of the distribu- distribution you've been doing. And I've been impressed. One thing to talk about that should be brought up kind of globally, because you mentioned it kind of in passing, but I think it's a big point, is that you've been you've you've been supporting the channel, the AV, AV uh, channel for many years. You didn't come from consumer touch POS displays and say, oh, by the way, we're going to support Pro AV, even though you have that technology. You've been a big supporter of AV of the AV industry and the the distribution channel that we have. So this is not like a product that you. Uh, have sold through uh, consumer distribution and you recognize the support of the AV channel. So let's recognize that support and let's support Mimo. Give them a shot because although you may not have, you know, maybe you don't know Mimo and haven't used them before because maybe you're not in digital signage. If you were in digital signage, you would know them. Or maybe you haven't been in the applications where you've needed touch displays and, and, and or you purchased the touch displays from the, brand, from the manufacturer of the monitor itself. Uh, and not realize that there's, you know, there are third party companies out there that can can give you a better experience. But in this case, here's uh, David and his company bringing you a finished product specifically for a market that is one of the hottest markets in the industry. And as we go back to work, this idea of simplifying rooms and the ability to buy one, uh, he said it himself, one SKU, you, it ships to you and you decide how you're going to use it. You decide how you're going to deploy it and which kind of room, plug it in, and it is true plug and play. Uh, support them. Give them a shot. So if you're not already a dealer for, for Mimo, go to MimoMonitors.com, check it out, but also check out the new product, the Mist and the Mist Link product specifically. Um, we, we gave you a teaser video on there. All that data is all, go- everything, all the specs, everything we've talked about today is on their website. And of course, now we've kind of built a, uh, a FAQ for you that you might want to put on there as well. Uh, Joe Perez, uh, ask a quick uh, question. Is there a management or administrator software package for enterprise rollouts? Are there license requirements, cost per year, that kind of thing? So let's, let's say they want to deploy 50 or 100 at a time. How would you suggest they do that? Um, yeah, so uh, r- right now we do not have uh, that backend um, software uh, to, to manage a hundred of them, the way they would be managed at that point is via the room PC. So that would be a direct connect. Um, and then, uh, software updates and firmware updates and things like that can all be updated over USB and you'd use the, the management, you'd use the management built into to windows or teams or, or meet or, or those kinds of things. So, okay. So the answer to that, I guess, Joe, is if you're using zoom, you'd use zoom, uh, the, the room management software, the cloud software that you log into to ra- manage all the systems. So I guess part of that would be, th- I guess part of that answer is obvious because to meet the specs of each of those systems, you have to have a way to update them uh, to meet the specs. So that would that would be centralized uh, control ultimate or management ultimately. Yeah, uh, but it, every, it, every bit of firmware uh, in the display is updatable uh, over its USB link. Uh, and then other simple things like we can cycle power uh, internally. We've got controllers to do that. Um, so, um, but that's all done through the existing interfaces from uh, from Zoom or others. That question, by the way, came across LinkedIn Live. He's not even in the the platform. He's actually watching on LinkedIn Live. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Wayneard Langhoven asked the question. This is a great question. I, I'm not. I didn't even think of this one myself. Do you have an open frame version of the product or a product that can be mounted in a lectern or inside of a table or, in a, or on a wall or something like that? Have you thought about that? Um, I shall say there's no reason why we couldn't build such a thing, but no, we don't have that today. 
Okay. So I guess the, 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 the issue, Lane, Wayne, uh, Wayne, if you are getting ready to buy, Wayne, sorry, if you're getting ready to buy hundreds, I'm sure David would love to talk to you because he would build you an open frame version of it. We know, we know how to bend a little bit of metal and mount, mount some boards to it, but no, we don't have that today. The cool thing is there's a lot of third-party companies out there that specialize in that, and I bet if you went to Peerless, they would do something for you uh, uh, from the product that they current, from the product that David's going to ship. But at least, hey, they got to start somewhere. This is their first product like this, so let's let's uh, let's just give them a little bit of a break for not thinking out everything. But I'll, I'll tell you, you, you can't think of every kind of scenario you're going to need or how people are going to want to use this product from the very beginning. But I'm excited about the product. I'm excited to be able to bring this to you, David. Thank you very much for being here today. I want to thank all of our launch members for joining us on the launch platform. I want to follow, I thank all of my LinkedIn followers for following me on LinkedIn. If you have not followed David yet on LinkedIn, just open up the camera app on your phone, scan that QR code right now, follow David on LinkedIn, and then challenge him. Keep asking him these questions. I know David answers his LinkedIn messages because I actually get messages. I, I ask him questions across LinkedIn before. So I, I want you to Contact him on LinkedIn and give him some product ideas. Tell him, hey, you should add this or this functionality. You should look at this partner out there because uh, obviously the market is evolving constantly. And I think this product has um, interesting implications outside of UCC. I could see this product becoming a control interface for a bigger room uh, if uh, someone like Utelogy or uh, you know, some of these other software-based platforms got a hold of this, David. So I'm sure that's what's going to end up happening. David, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, don't, don't forget, MemoMonitors.com. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Have a great day.